<clears throat> All right. Now we're just waiting for uh, YouTube to do its thing. What's up, guys? How's everyone doing? I got the softbox in the way, huh? Okay. Yo, what's up guys? So today I'm gonna be showing you, I'm gonna start doing lives more often. I need to get my practice on with the uh, uh, OBS. I think that's pretty important. Hopefully the quality is decent. I know somebody said yesterday's live stream was just like 480p. Um, but it looks like 720 and 1080 are also, also options, but Today I just want to show you live like how I set up a gimbal. We're going to be looking at, uh, you know, I got a few gimbals here. I got the M2S, I got the uh, M2, I got the Crane uh, M3 right here. And uh, I also have the Weeble 2, which is mainly going to be my focus for today's video. Uh, so we'll wait for a few people to tune in. And uh, are you balancing the 70 to 200? Do you want me to? Do you want me to balance the 70 to 200? I'll be more than happy to show you how I do that. I'll bring out the Crane 2S and do it on that gimbal. Uh, you know what, let's do it, right? Uh, so let's just wait for a few more people to tune on in. Uh, let me grab the Weeble S. We'll start off light and then we'll go to um, the 70 to 200, okay? So I got the Weeble 2 right over here, guys. What's up, everybody? Tune on in. This is going to be fun. <clears throat> you can grab a tripod here. And I'll show you guys how it's done. So for those of you who are wondering, this is the Weeble 2. Right now, I'm gonna start off by balancing this setup right here, which is just very simple, you know, not too heavy, uh, also not too light. This is a Sony A9 with a camera cage and an 85 mil 1.8 from Sony. So very lightweight lens, okay? All right, before I get started, guys, awesome. You're watching in 1080p, I'm so happy. Awesome, before I get started guys, let me know if you have any specific questions about any of these gimbals. What are you struggling with? We can talk about a whole bunch of different things here. I can show you my motor power settings on all of these gimbals. I mean, um, my Crane 2S is packed away over there. We'll grab that in a second when I pull out the 70 to 200. Uh, but yeah, we'll start off with a lightweight setup and then we'll go from there, okay? All right. <laughs> I showed that on the thumbnail. Yeah, so sometimes, yeah. Okay, cool, no worries. I'll show you guys how to balance a 70 to 200, not a problem. All right, so Weeble, uh, uh, Weeble 2, no more Weeble S. It's all about the Weeble 2 now. Okay, well, we're first gonna start off with, guys, really simple process here. Okay, here's our gimbal, Weeble 2. You guys know that. I'm gonna start off by loosening up the roll axis. I'm gonna unlock the axis lock, swing it up into its default position. Then I'm gonna unlock the tilt axis, put it in its default position as well. And then I'm gonna turn the gimbal around so that way it's facing you guys. Okay, awesome, cool. So far so good, you guys are with me. Next we are going to take the quick release plate, all right? Now this part is very important. For those larger setups, you know, you can position your camera on different sections of the quick release plate simply by moving the quarter 20 inch screw around. Now because I'm using a light, well not too light of a setup, but a lighter setup, I don't really have to worry about that too much. So what I'm gonna do by default, guys, I'm gonna actually take the quick release plate, let me put the mic up here so you guys can hear me better. I'm gonna take the quick release plate, I'm gonna mount it directly in the center of the camera. 
Now I do have a camera cage on here, which means that I have a ton of different mounting options. So if you don't have a, a, a camera cage, uh, I recommend that you get one that or at least an L bracket, something that will allow you to use multiple different ports instead of just one port. Because that's going to help you out, especially if you're going to have a really bulky camera. Uh, this will just allow you to just have more options, and options are always good on these things, okay? So we are going to take the quick release plate. We're going to mount it directly in the center. Make sure it's good and tight. Uh, I do recommend using a coin to tighten this thing up. So let me see if I can actually find a, something that I can tighten it up with. Give me one second, guys. No, do I not have any coins here? One second, guys. Give me one second. Let me go get a coin. All right. Okay, there you go. Nice penny there. Quarters are the best. Tighten that guy up right there. Nice and tight. You don't want it moving around. Next, what we're gonna do, just slide it on the gimbal, guys. Very simple. Now, if it does collide with the tilt motor, all you need to do is loosen up this adjustment right here. Move the plate over to the side and then the camera should slide in very easily and lock into place. All right, once you hear that gratifying locking sound, we are going to lock the quick release plate and now your camera is mounted. So far, so good. Are we doing all right, guys? You're with me? Awesome. Make sure everything is nice and tight. What's loose here? Okay, not a problem. Okay, everything is good and tight right now. We're not balanced yet. We just mounted the camera. Let's see if we got any questions. Um, I've been testing the a7 IV of the Weeble 2 and camera control doesn't work. Wondering if you've been able to get the camera control working on the Weeble 2. I have updated to the latest firmware. Yes, so I've been able to get everything working on the Weeble 2, including the motion tracking. Um, I don't know if we'll cover that in today's video because that is quite a lot, but uh, uh, these streams seem to be doing decent, so maybe we'll cover that in another uh, live stream. I think I'm going to start doing a lot of live streams. Um, that way I can interact with you guys better. Uh, it's heavier setup to help reducing jitter. I, I hate jitter. I hate jitter covering up in post. Yes, so are you on the Weevil 2 and what is your camera setup? Let me know. Okay, so now we got the camera mounted on. What I usually like to start off with when balancing is I like to start off with the tilt axis. I think that's the easiest way to do things. So I'm gonna unlock the axis lock and let's see what the camera wants to do. Okay, now our overall goal is to have the ability to position the camera in any orientation and have it stay in that orientation. So I'm gonna drop the desk a little bit so you guys can see better. Okay. So if I have the camera pointed up, I should be able to let go and it should remain pointed up. As of right now, guys, the camera stays centered. So for example, if I were to push the quick release plate forward like this, it would be flopping forward. So the first thing that you wanna mess with guys is the quick release plate. So if the camera is flopping forward, all you have to do is counteract that by pushing the quick release plate back until it stops flopping forward. Okay, very simple. Just get it until it stops, done. Okay, it stays centered. Now you can lock up that quick release plate. Okay, we're not, our tilt axis is not balanced yet. As I said earlier, we should be able to hand position the camera in any orientation and it should stay like that. Okay, 
Great. Now, our secondary tilt adjustment is this guy right here. We're going to loosen up this thumb screw. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us the ability to move the gimbal up or move the camera up or down. I'm going to point the camera up and I'm going to push this whole system up or down until the camera wants to remain pointing up. Micro adjustments always use two hands. The camera wants to remain pointing up. So we're in the perfect position right now. Once you got it like that, lock it up. Now point the camera forward and see what it wants to do. Does it want to flop forward? Does it want to flop backward? If the answer is no, then we have the tilt adjustment balanced perfectly. If you notice, I can position the camera in any orientation and it's not flopping. It's staying in that orientation. Our tilt axis is perfectly balanced. Okay. Next axis is the roll adjustment. Okay. This is our next adjustment that we have to worry about the roll motor. I'm going to unlock. Actually, I'm going to start off by uh, locking the tilt axis. So that way it doesn't bother us. I'm going to unlock the roll axis. Very simple. Unlock it. And what does the gimbal want to do? It wants to flop over to this side. All we have to do is counteract that by moving it over to the opposite side. So I'm going to unlock the uh, adjustment right here. So sorry, I got a little confused here. I forgot the Weeble 2 doesn't have a the roll uh, roll arm moving. It's actually going to be the quick release plate system. So let me try and get you guys a better view of what I'm talking about. So right here, this adjustment right here is what we want to be focusing on. You're going to be moving the quick release plate either to the left or to the right to counteract that. So because the camera is leaning over to this direction, we are going to push the camera over to the other direction to level it off. So I'm going to unlock the quick release system or the, the mount for the quick release system. And I'm going to push the camera over to the opposite side so that way it levels out. Micro adjustments here. It's going to take a little bit of patience. Done. Once it levels off, lock it up. Doing this, not, yeah, there we go, okay. And then double check it. Position it, make sure it doesn't want to flop over. Hand position it, make sure it wants to stay in that position. Once it does, you have a properly balanced roll axis. Now let's check the tilt and the roll. Hand position it, if it wants to stay in that position, it's properly balanced. Sorry, it's swinging back because I, I pushed it. But it should stay in that position for the most part. Okay, it's balanced. Final adjustment and the most overlooked adjustment is the pan axis. So I'm going to lift up the desk and show you guys. This is very important. Everybody overlooks this. Everybody. How do you balance the pan adjustment? It's very simple. First, you have to check to make sure that it's balanced or not. All you have to do, slightly lift up the gimbal, make sure the pan is unlocked, and tilt it over. If it's swinging around like this, then it's not balanced. All we have to do is loosen up this tensioner here and just mess around with this arm, pushing it back, pushing it forward, and then tilting it over and seeing if it swings around. Notice how it just stops swinging. This is the easiest axis to balance. It's super easy. Now guys, we have a beautifully balanced gimbal. This is gonna be very good for you in the long run when it comes down to performance and battery life on the Weeble 2. It's beautifully, ba it's beautifully balanced. No complaints here. 
I mean, it's staying in every single position that I want it to. Um, this is how you know the gimbal is balanced. It's not wanting to change positions after I let go. Okay? So hopefully that guy that, that helped you out, guys. Let me know in the comment section. Um, let me get back down here and see what you guys are saying. <clears throat> What's up? <laughs> um... Hi, I use a Sony ZV-1 with this model OG gimbal, but I think it's a little too big and heavy. Uh, what OG gimbal? My setup is an a7 III, looking forward for the DJI Ronin S2 as my gimbal. I'm able to get everything fully working on the a7 III, however on the a7 IV everything works except the triggering record. Hopefully you can cover that in an upcoming live. So I don't have an a7 IV, I have an a7S III. Same menu system, so I think it's going to be basically the same. Uh, I'm shooting this live on the a7S III right now, so I can't really uh, show you. Uh, but maybe I can just swap the cameras out, uh, put on my a9 for the live streaming, and then we'll, we can go from there. Um, quality looks pretty decent on this live, guys. Uh, hopefully it's streaming in HD. Let me know in the comments section, please. And by the way, if this uh, live stream is helping you out, feel free to use the super chat. Um, it helps out the channel. Everything that I make on YouTube goes back into YouTube. Uh, so if this is helping you out, please feel free to super chat or share the live. Thank you so much. Uh, any tips and tricks for shooting with gimbal for longer time? My setup is a Canon R6 with a Crane 2S. It's pretty heavy and my wrist starts hurting after a while. Um, any tips or tricks? Yes. First of all, um, you need to be training your arms. I recommend picking up a 15 to 20 pound dumbbell and you need to be working your forearms 15 minutes every day. So you're going to be picking up a dumbbell, putting it in your hand and just doing this. This is going to build your arm strength. Now with the gimbal, usually where a lot of the pain is, is not just on the arm but it's either on the shoulder or the shoulder blade in your back. This is where I had a lot of pain growing up and where, uh, you know, when I first started using heavier setups, when I was actually a lot smaller back in the day, I had a lot of pain, a lot of pain, okay? Uh, so I started working out. Uh, you don't need a gym membership, just pick up a dumbbell or some uh, uh, rubber bands and work with that. Work with that. Uh, you need to build strength in your arm. You also need to be stretching. Wedding shoots are minimum eight hours. You need to be pre prepared for that weight. You need to be holding this gimbal. I mean, I've had shoots where I've had to hold a gimbal like this uh, for 10, 15 minutes at a time without putting it down. Uh, so, okay, let's say you do have the arm strength but you're still experiencing pain. Well, first things first, always use two hands. When you can't sit down the gimbal, set it down on your actual thigh right here, okay? This is very important. This is, this is your rest area, okay? Let me actually lock up the gimbal so it doesn't swing around. <clears throat> so when I would shoot long events, guys, I would rarely set down um, my gimbal. It would always go into my thigh or my pelvic area right here. Okay. This is where I would keep all of the weight. And then when the client was ready, boom, I'm set. Okay. So that's how it is. That's how it is. You need to be working out the forearms. That's very important. You got to build that strength up. I have a Crane 3 Lab paired with a Sony a7 III uh, and a Samyang 35 1.4, pretty heavy setup. When using a monitor on one side, what's the best position to hold the gimbal while walking? Just give me any tips. Okay. Uh, how big is the monitor? Five inch, seven inch, 10 inch? How big is the monitor? Now, preference, guys, instead of mounting the monitor on the side, the Crane 3 Lab is a pretty big gimbal. So 
If you have a five inch monitor, try mounting it on the top of your camera. Um, try, see if you can pull that off. You might have enough clearance depending on your camera. Because if you have weight that's off center, it's gonna make it more difficult to hold and to control unless you're using a vest. I like to keep center of gravity, so try to stack the monitor on top of the camera and try to go from there. Uh, the Crane 3 Lab should have plenty of clearance for a five inch monitor if you're using a, a mirrorless setup. Uh, so if you don't have enough clearance, you don't really have too many options when it comes down to mounting your monitor. You can only mount it on the left or the right, or if you're able to use a magic arm, mount it to the front a little bit like this. Okay, so my hand is a monitor. Your monitor is gonna be right here. Or you can mount it to the back, but sometimes it's a little bit too close and you don't wanna go cross-eyed. So having a little bit of dif distance from your monitor is nice. So front, back, or side to side, I would try to keep the center of gravity as best as you can because that's what's gonna keep the longevity going. And uh, the more off-center you are, the more difficult it is to hold these heavier gimbals. So I hope that answered your question. Any other questions, guys? Any other uh, things that I can help you out with? Let me know. Uh, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and bring out the 70 to 200. I'm going to show you how to quickly balance that on the Crane 2S. I want to show you how quickly I can balance it. Um, so let me grab the 70 to 200. All right, here's the 70 to 200. I'm going to go ahead and remove my A9 here. I'm going to put the Weeble 2 to the side. My studio is such a mess, guys. It is such a mess. Okay. <laughs> I just have equipment everywhere. All right. Let's bring out the Crane 2S. All right. Now, if you do plan on using a 70 to 200 with your Crane 2S, I recommend extending the arm, the tilt arm. If you don't, gonna make your life a lot more difficult. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, hang on. The Crane 3, the Crane 3S has that arm extension, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, the Crane 3S, I apologize. The Crane 3S has that arm extension. So, not the Crane 2S. All right, so we got, <clears throat> this beautiful beast of a gimbal. I'm gonna shut up now, I'm gonna show you how quickly I can balance this thing, and then we'll talk about it, okay? Sound good? Somebody time me. All right, I'll tell you when to start the timer. Let me just prep the equipment. But go ahead and time me, and I'll show you how easily I can balance this setup. Go ahead and just mount the lens on the camera, and we'll go from there. Someone got a stopwatch ready? I'll add the lens hood on later. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay. Who's ready to time me? And let me know how quickly, let me know what your predictions are. How quickly can I balance this rig? So we got the Sony A9 with a camera cage and a 70 to 200 G Master with the Crane 2S. How quickly do you think I can balance this rig? And someone go ahead and uh, time me. I'll tell you when to time me. <clears throat> I'm a little nervous, but I think we can do it. I think we can do it in 30 seconds. 
I'm pretty ballsy like that. All right, you guys ready? Let me lift up the desk a little. Actually, what happens if I zoom out a little bit? I zoom out a little. I got the different gimbals here. Okay. All right, guys, on your mark. Ready in three. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Ready in three, two, one, go. Okay, we ran into a little bit of a problem here. Not a problem, not a problem. Okay, I confused this gimbal with the Crane 3S, so. I know it's not a legitimate excuse, but We'll work on it. All right, we reached 30 seconds, great. All right, time, we're balanced. So I think I did about 45 seconds. I can do better than that. Um, I can definitely do better than that, guys. But we're balanced. So I completely forgot about the clearance on the Crane 2S. As you can see, the uh, eyepiece goes into the gimbal. I completely forgot about that. On the Crane 2S, I don't have that issue. So that kind of uh, slowed me down a little bit. But we are balanced um, for the most part. Uh, the only problem is that the eyepiece collides. But this is, this is the rig. This is the setup. Uh, let me turn on the gimbal. Yeah, there we go. We're balanced on here. On the Crane 3S, definitely easier because of the clearance. But yeah, someone give me the time. 1.52, man, okay, 1.52, that sounds a little too long, bro. No, I can do better than that. I can do better than that. I completely forgot that on the Crane 2S that the clearance is not as as big as the Crane 3S. Um, so that was my bad. But I can definitely do it in 30 seconds. I can definitely do this in 30 seconds. I promise you that. Even though a minute 52 isn't that bad, I can do it in under 30 seconds. I know I can. But anyway, let me show you my thought process with all of this, okay? So with the 70 to 200 and the Sony A9, you're gonna come across an issue with clearance, all right? And that's what threw me off. This is what caused the lag time. I completely spaced on it, okay? If you're going to be using this kind of rig, just remember about the eyepiece. You're either going to want to remove it or you're just going to have to deal with it colliding into the roll motor. You're just going to have to deal. I have so many different types of gimbals, sometimes I forget which is which. So I confused the Crane 2S with the Crane 3S and that's why I had some issues. 
But overall, do not worry if you do get this gimbal. You're still going to be able to balance this rig. Okay? You're still going to be able to balance it. I mean, just to mount it back onto the rig is just so easy. But you're going to have some issues on the tilt axis with it colliding. Okay? So just keep that in mind. We'll keep that off to the side. But yeah, 152 for me, guys, is really slow. I can do I can do it in, in 30 seconds or less. Oh, yeah. 100%. If I didn't uh, have that issue with the eyepiece, definitely under 30 seconds. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys have any more questions. Uh, but that's basically the setup with the 70 to 200. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Still amazing, bro. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Uh, sir, which gimbal I have to buy? It depends on the rig. It depends on your camera. Um, you have to let me know what you're shooting on. And let me know if you guys are enjoying these lives because if you are, I'm gonna be doing them a few times a week. I think that um, my standard uploads can be kind of annoying. Um, my standard you know, uploads can be kind of annoying at times because I feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over again, but these lives, they seem more raw and I can connect with you guys better. And I think it's just uh, kind of the newer era, the new era of YouTube. I think live streaming is just becoming so much more popular. Uh, but let me know if you guys are enjoying this type of stuff. Obviously, I'm gonna get better at live streaming, better with the live stream editing. I'm using OBS right now, so that's just what it is. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you guys are enjoying this. Sorry guys, just getting back to a message. Um, it's becoming so popular because people don't need to edit videos this way. What's up, Roger? Uh, what time zone do you live in? Pacific Standard Time. I'm in Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Christopher Carrasso. I'm watching you from Peru. Thank you very much, brother. But yeah, guys, that's that's about it. I mean, gimbals are simple. They're very, very simple. Um, for a newbie to pick up a gimbal like this, it can be very intimidating because this gimbal is pretty intimidating looking. It's a, it's a big gimbal. It's got big, beefy motors. I mean, it is what it is, but I'm here to help you out, guys. Uh, but yeah, let's keep in touch. Uh, let's do more live streams. Um, I'll... I'm gonna try and do two to three live streams a week. I think this is a great way to connect with you guys. Uh, but again, if you find these live streams helpful, throw me a super chat. Uh, all investments, uh, not investments, but all the proceeds that go to this channel go back into the business. Uh, so that way I can take the time and, and talk with you guys and show you guys these live streams and just have an overall really good time with you. And uh, we can do all that stuff. And eventually I'm gonna get so good at this live streaming stuff that I'll add some cool background music, different camera angles. I mean, that's gonna be really sick. How many hours for the 70 to 200 gimbal battery? For my testing, you can get minimum eight hours. Minimum eight hours. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if it's properly balanced. Roger, thank you for the super chat, brother. I appreciate you, man. <clears throat> once we start doing more live streams, I haven't done live streaming in like a couple of years. So once we do more live streams, the subscribers are going to start, you know, watching the content because 20 people watching is kind of low. 
should be around 100. Uh, so once this becomes a consistent basis, guys, we're going to have some fun. All right. This is going to be some fun. Josh rules. Roger, you rule, brother. You rule, man. <clears throat> By the way, all the crazy unicycle videos I've been posting, Roger's been in a few of those videos. Roger's a man, dude. Very intelligent, dude. Very, very intelligent. Uh, does Godox TL60 still a good option? Cool, guys. Yeah, let's talk about lighting now. I mean, okay, look, look how many gimbals we got. Like, this is absolutely insane. So we got... <laughs> God, how many gimbals do I have? This is not even all the gimbals that I have. I have one more in the garage still. We got, like, look at this. What the hell? Um, I think I need to do a giveaway soon. This is getting a little too much for me. I have two Crane M3s. So, Weeble 2, M2S, M2, M3, Crane 2S, and the Crane 3S is packed away in the garage. Uh, that would not even be able to fit in the frame. <laughs> so that's what we're talking about, guys. I mean, and we got we got a bunch of lights, man. I just started uh, I started my first collaboration with Nanlite. So these cool tube lights that you see behind me, they are eight foot tall tube lights. Eight feet tall they're heavy they're very very heavy lights like i had a tough time you know they were shipped in these huge huge boxes and i had the toughest time bringing them in the house i do have tall ceilings luckily but not in all the rooms so these things are almost touching my ceiling that's how tall they are and um check it out uh, I know I didn't answer your Godox question, but I will in a second. This is uh, right now. This is a 12 inch, uh, 12 inch RGB tube, right? I mean, look how. <laughs> look at that. I mean, I have one inch tube lights. I have three foot two. Oh, not one inch. One foot tube lights. Three foot tube lights. Four foot tube lights. Two foot tube lights. And eight foot tube lights. So I'm going ham on the tube lights, guys. They provide this cool futuristic look that I think is really dope. And uh, yeah, I just wanna have excuses to use them more. And eventually down the road, I do wanna do some uh, demos of equipment uh, in Los Angeles. So if you guys are located in LA and eventually I'll start traveling again, I'm gonna try and bring out as much equipment as I can to these locations so you can actually try it before you buy it. Uh, a lot of people don't have that opportunity, so I want to bring that opportunity to you. We can have some of these workshops, demo days, and yeah. Uh, so let me answer your question about the TL60s. Is it still a good option? Yes. I have a TL60 charging over there. TL60 is a great option. Um, I have a few TL120s from Godox coming in. So these are four foot Godox lights. Uh, they're supposed to arrive today. Today. Uh, the TL60s are great. I love them. And uh, yeah, I just, I think it's great. I think Nanlite is the only company that makes eight foot tube lights. Like, holy hell, man. Like these things are too long for me to even show you end to end uh, in the frame. It's just, they're too long. They're heavy. And I just actually got a Forza 500 from Nanlite, which is a 500 watt uh, COB LED light. Uh, and I was messing around with it the other day and oh my God, the power of the sun. Godox is making a 600 watt light. All these people, all these companies right now, they're going after Aperture. It's a very cutthroat business. They're going after Aperture. Aperture released a 300, 600. Now they're doing 1200. Godox is trailing behind them with their 600 now. 
I forgot what it's called. It's like an ML 600, I think. But I will be receiving the 600 watt. Uh, I'm gonna have this 500 watt. I have a falconized 300 watt, which is also super bright. But the 1200D from Aperture, you're talking about sunlight, man. Even the 500 and the 600, I attach a Fresnel on that thing, and then it's damn, it's game over at that point. Wow, I'm really liking the quality of this live stream, guys. If you're watching in 1080, let me know because that's what it looks like I'm streaming in and I'm digging it. And I want to give a big shout out to Hollyland for providing me the uh, wireless capture cards to record this. Um, this is the Cosmo C1. 900 foot transmission system. Cosmo C1, guys. And it's it doubles up as a capture card. Also, if you don't follow me on Instagram, guys, check me out on Instagram. I also do lives on there as well. I share more of my personal life on Instagram sometimes in my stories, not on my feed, but on my stories. So if you want to know who I'm dating, if you want to know my mom, my dad, my brother, go on my Instagram. Stalk me. <laughs> um, but I actually just posted a photo of uh, me shooting with Vern Troyer, a.k.a. Mini-Me from Austin Powers and Randy Jackson from American Idol. Um uh, I worked with both of them back in 2018. Sweetest people I ever met. I mean, Vern Troyer, rest in peace, brother. Um, yeah, I I knew Vern for a couple of years. What a sweetheart that guy was. And we had a lot of fun. I was shooting his YouTube videos and we did a lot of cool challenges and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, 2018 was a really good year. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with a lot of big people like uh, Rebecca Black, you know, the girl that wrote that Friday song. Another sweet girl. Very, very sweet people. I even worked with Jake Paul. And believe it or not, Jake Paul was a very sweet guy as well. Um, this was before he went into YouTube full time. So this is 2015 that I worked with Jake Paul. And um, Lele Pons, I worked with her as well. Uh, I have never in the field been disrespected. Uh, I've been taken advantage of, but not face-to-face -face been disrespected. Um, celebrities, working with celebrities, guys, is, is an experience. Because they have so much power. Alright, celebrities have fix my hair. Celebrities have a ton of power. They can plug you into that social pipeline to get you more gigs, more jobs. And between 2015 or 2014 and 2019, I've worked with so many big people. So many big people. Chef Rush, the White House chef, that big buff dude, like I worked with him, you know, Rebecca Black, Paige Hathaway, Kai Green, Rob Riches, uh, Vern Troyer, Randy Jackson, um, Patty Stanger, the millionaire matchmaker. I mean, I've been, I've been very blessed to work with these people in Los Angeles. And like I said, Jake Paul, Lele Pons, all those guys, Logan Paul as well. I mean, I met all of them. I have their phone numbers for crying out loud. Like it's it's surreal. And I'm not I'm nothing special, guys. I'm nothing special. All I had to do was go on their socials, find their email, and write them an email. And the guy who introduced me to Vern Troyer and Randy Jackson, I was in a fraternity with him in college. So that was fun. Um that's actually one of the big benefits of fraternities is that you don't know who you're going to bump into. So if you're in college right now, consider it. Consider it. Consider joining a fraternity, something, or it doesn't have to be a fraternity, but some sort of club. A filmmaking club, dance club, I don't know, some sort of club, some sort of camaraderie, um, some sort of group 
something that you feel a part of, something that you can, you know, you can build off of because networking is key. Skills are key too, but you have to be a social person uh, to build this up. And I'm just speaking from experience. Uh, that's just my two cents, guys, on this on this production stuff. And I know I'm, I'm live streaming for 45 minutes already talking about this stuff. I don't know if you even want to hear this, but this is just my, my life advice to you because I know a lot of you are starting off or just, you know, thinking about transitioning to full-time production. I mean, this is what it takes. You need to be social. You need to network. You need to be a part of a ton of groups. Work on your social skills. I used to be an introvert. Big time introvert. It was hard for me to connect with people. I'll be honest. It's It was very, very hard. Um, but if you want to get to a level, let me get the mic, get the mic out of the shot. If you want to get to a level, guys, where you're working with these high profile clients, with these brands, with these people in general, I mean, you need to be social. You need to be able to deal with... Uh, social anxiety. Everybody has social anxiety. If I were to meet Chef Ramsay tomorrow, you bet your ass I would have been extremely nervous because that guy is my idol. If I were to get 10 seconds of footage of Chef Ramsay, I would probably like lose myself, man. Gordon Ramsay, man, that guy is like next level, dude. Uh, I remember I ate at his restaurant for my birthday. My, my mom and dad got me, a, not a gift card, but they bought me dinner at one of his restaurants here in LA. And I was shaking. As I was eating the beef wellington, I was shaking. But yeah, the overall lesson, guys, is when, you're, when you want brands to be chasing you, offering you jobs, offering you projects, when you want clients coming back to you, high paying uh, clients, high profile clients. You gotta be social. I learned this the hard way um, because I wasn't social in high school. I wasn't social in college. I was a very big introvert. And the opportunities that I probably passed up on, I mean, I went to a high school with a thousand kids but I definitely knew that a few of those kids that went to that high school, their parents were in Hollywood. They were doing some sort of production. If I was friends with those kids, they would have introduced me to their parents. I would have had some sort of connection into Hollywood at a much younger age. You got to be social. That's my two cents. You got to talk. You got to learn how to use your mouth. No pun intended. You gotta be social. You just don't know who you're talking to until you start talking to them. And it doesn't matter where you are, if you're in Atlanta, if you're in New York, if you're in LA, if you're in Kentucky, you don't know who you're talking to until you start talking to them. But I want to add one gimbal. I have Sony a7S III. Which one would you prefer? If you have the Sony a7S III, what kind of lenses do you want to be using on that uh, camera? If you want to be using something like a 70 to 200, you're going to need a Crane 2S minimum. I mean, I was able to, on the Weeble S, I was able to use a 70 to 200, but that's like, that's almost impossible to balance. Uh, but I would recommend a Crane 2S if you want to use a 70 to 200. The Crane 2S, guys, you know, it doesn't have proprietary batteries. So you can buy these batteries separately. They're just simple 18650 batteries that you can buy on Amazon. Um, but the Crane 2S is one of the few gimbals left that doesn't use proprietary batteries. And it's large enough to balance a 70 to 200, <clears throat> 70 to 200. Okay. Uh, 24 to 70, then you can go with the Weeble 2. I think the Weeble 2, uh, where did I put that gimbal? You know what a Weeble 2, yeah, I put it over there. You know what a Weeble 2 looks like. Um, 
but yeah, that's that's what I uh, think. Online Ordonez, thank you, brother. I was talking to the owner of Fly Fly, and the boom, he is my sponsor. Hell yeah, man. See, I'm telling you guys, just because I live in LA doesn't necessarily give me an advantage. Every state, every country, people travel, celebrities have different properties around the world. You don't know who you're talking to until you start talking with them. All right? Some life advice. And I think these live streams are a really good way for me guys to connect with you, tell you what's up, um, be a little bit more serious and more transparent with you because these YouTube videos that I've been posting and you know these pre-recorded YouTube videos that I've been doing, they take a lot out of me mentally, but I feel like I'm not myself uh, because a lot of these videos are sponsored, they're all, they are branded. Um, that doesn't mean I don't give my honest opinions because I do. That's part of the, the, the contract. I can't BS you guys. I, I made that promise when I started YouTube. Um, but I lose myself a little bit. I lose myself a little bit. But when I do these live streams, guys, I feel like I can really connect with you and, and uh, you know, just tell you what's going on. And if you're struggling or if you're trying to find work and just do something real, I feel like these live streams offer you the opportunity or offer us the opportunity to connect. Yeah. What have you seen of the technological advances in gimbal tech do you see in the future where we won't have to manually balance our gimbals? I feel like we will always have to manually balance our gimbals. Um, but technically right now, the gimbals like the Crane 3S, you don't have to balance because the motors are just so powerful. But again, if you don't balance the gimbal, uh, you're limited on overall performance and stability and uh, battery life. Like technically, you don't have to balance that thing because it's so powerful. A Ronin 2, you technically don't have to balance either. But people do it because they know you get better performance, more stability, and better battery life. But a gimbal will always need to be balanced. That's just how it is. And for me, I can balance a gimbal in 30 seconds or less. I mean, I want you guys to get to that level, okay? Do I still use a glide cam sometimes? I stopped using glide cams, but I have three of them in my garage. Um, if you guys are interested, I will be more than happy to, to bring those out and start uh, showing you how I use them. But yeah, guys, uh, again, if this live stream has helped you out in any way, I would greatly appreciate the super chat. Uh, you can send me any donation you would like. These donations go right back into the business and uh, the more donations through Super Chat that I get, the longer I can stay on the live stream unless I have to worry about shooting branded content because we all know what branded content is like at times. It can be very stressful and just not organic. This way I can be more organic with you, answer your questions live and just, you know, this feels like a Skype session, like a personal Skype, Skype session between me and you. And I'm really glad, guys, <clears throat> I'm really glad that the live stream is performing a lot better than it did yesterday. I feel like, uh, you know, it's, I'm glad that it's in HD. <laughs> um, I'm really glad that it's in HD. So that's just making my life a little bit better. This damn mic though keeps slipping. <clears throat> which light which lightweight shotgun mic would you recommend for camera mounted on a gimbal currently using an a7s3 24 1.4 weevil s i have just the mic if i could remember the name So this is the Deity D1. 
d4 duo. Focus up. No, you're not going to focus. That's the deity d4 duo. Great sounding microphone. It's tiny, comes with a shock mount, and it's two microphones in one. So if you're a vlogger or if you're shooting something where you want your voice to be heard, it'll pick up audio from the back. It'll pick up audio from the front. And it comes with wind muffs. And it attaches via a cold shoe adapter. That's all you need, man. However, if you need a microphone that has, you know, that's more sensitive and picks up from a, a longer distance, you're gonna need something like a Rode NTG2, NTG3, or my favorite microphones are Sennheiser. I think they make the best mics in the world. <clears throat> but yeah, that's my two cents on audio, guys. Uh, you know, you also have the ability to use wireless labs. Hollyland started making some cool wireless labs. Their Lark 150. Um, I have a few of those mics and they sound pretty dope. Uh, but shotgun mics do sound the best because they're wired, there's no interference, no dropouts. And uh, yeah, that's just my two cents on that. Let's go to Shutterfest. Great opportunity to make a portfolio. What is Shutterfest? Quality of the stream is A+. Thank you, Roger. I appreciate, I appreciate you, man. Any other questions, guys? I do want to go past the one hour mark just to see how I feel. And uh, if, if you guys are enjoying these streams as much as I am, because I, I really enjoy uh, doing these streams, We'll be doing them two to three times a week. I think doing pre-recorded YouTube videos just is just getting to me, man. I'm getting burnt out. Um, of course, I'm gonna continue doing at least one of those videos a week, but it's just, it's just burning me out, man. I've been burnt out since 2019. I've been really burnt out. So uh, these live streams are a way for me to continue to connect with you, being more raw, transparent, and just, uh, just being a happier individual in general, because at the end of the day, that's what's most important, right? Your happiness. I have a Zcam E2, beautiful camera. I love that thing. Uh, with an MPF 970 battery, and I can't balance with the Juin Crane 3 Lab. What should I do? You should send me a DM on Instagram, and we'll talk about it because that camera should balance on that gimbal, no problem. Maybe it's the way you rig the monitor or something, I don't know, but that camera is really not that big and for the Crane 3 Lab, it should be a piece of cake. So DM me, uh, let me go ahead and put my Instagram here so you guys follow me if you haven't followed me already. Instagram at uh, momentum underscore productions. Uh, and yeah, I think that's good. I still run a Ronin S. Uh, what are killer features of the newer gimbals that motivate you to upgrade? Some of the killer features, I would say the ease of use, the build quality ease of use. I had a Ronin S as well and I sold it simply because it was just too heavy for what it was. And there were moments when using that gimbal where I just felt like the pan was just too er, 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 robotic. The newer Juin gimbals like the Weeble 2 um, and even the Crane 2S, the pan is just so buttery smooth. And on the M2S, I actually shot some content. I made a YouTube video on that and I, uh, I really enjoyed the performance of that gimbal. Like, I, I really enjoy the performance of that gimbal. Okay. I'll be honest with you guys. Some real shit. Oh, I, I don't mean a cuss, but some real stuff. 
These live streams, guys, I want them to be raw, man. YouTubers don't get that. YouTubers don't get that. I want to be raw with you. Offer some good gimbal advice, lighting advice, and some life advice. I'm 29 years old. I know I'm still young, but damn, have I been through a lot in my career. I've worked with so many people. Brands too, but people, face-to-face, -face, celebrities. I don't mean to gloat, but I think I've worked with more celebrities than any other YouTuber in my class, bro. What are your views on the Sennheiser MKE 400? From all of the videos that I've seen on that microphone, God, it's just crispy, man. I love that mic. I don't have it. I used to have Sennheiser, but I don't have Sennheiser anymore. Um, there was a rough patch in my career a couple of years ago where I needed to make some quick cash. <laughs> uh, so I had to sell a lot of gear and then I bought a lot of gear. Um, so now I have road mics. Uh, but down the road, I will be picking up some Sennheisers as well. Do you offer adjusting crane plus? I think it is out of calibration. I do have a video on calibrating the crane V2, which is basically the crane plus the crane plus is a little bit more powerful, but it's very similar. Julius asks, what are your plans for this year? What are my plans for this year to make the most money I've ever made? Money is such a good motivator. It is such a good motivator, but it can also corrupt people to make them do things for the wrong reasons. So I want to make the most money while also helping the most amount of people. So it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, what are my specific plans for this year? I want to start hosting demos throughout LA, throughout California, throughout America. Hopefully the second quarter, third quarter of this year, I can start going around doing demos of new equipment so people can come out, try the equipment before they buy it, host a couple of workshops with pro photographers, pro videographers, cinematographers. This is my dream. My dream is to bring you guys out in the field and connect you with these pros instead of you just watching YouTube videos and just not experiencing it. You can watch YouTube content all day, but are you really experiencing it? No, I want you to come out and meet these professionals face to face, hold and feel the equipment, use the equipment, and then make the right decisions on whether or not you want to buy it. That's my dream for you, that's my dream for me. I wanna connect you guys. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's more of a two-handed gimbal. It's so heavy. Thanks for the answer. I didn't consider the pan. You're welcome, my friend. Ah, uh, yes. Drop us, <laughs> drop us the, drop us the knowledge. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Yeah, guys. So we hit the one-hour mark. I think we're gonna be starting, uh, you know, live streams at least twice a week, an hour long. Um, we'll do different topics. And uh, I really do appreciate you guys taking the time out of your weekday. Uh, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll do more of these. And, um, you know, from the heart, I appreciate your guys' support because some of you have been here since the beginning, since 2013 when I started this YouTube channel, I think it was 2013, 2014. I wonder who my first subscriber was. I wonder. <clears throat> Roger says, uh, demos, awesome idea from subject to MP4. From subject to MP4, what do you mean by that? Looking forward to more live content from your channel. Thank you, brother. Save the live, please. Yes, I will save the live. I will save the live.
Yeah. I just had like a complete mind shift. Um, yeah, guys, there's a lot about me you don't know. And uh, I don't mean to scare you or anything, but I think these live streams will give me the opportunity to open up to you guys and uh, just really share with you what life is like. What life is really like through the eyes of an Instagram or YouTube or TikTok or all that shit. I mean, I don't cuss. I'm so, I, I don't mean to cuss, but uh, yeah. But yeah, at the end of the day, guys, it's about you. It's about your experiences, your knowledge, uh, the things that you want to learn. And my goal is to meet you, to have coffee with you, and to just film some, create some. I think that's what's really important. I think 2022 is a year, guys. And then 2023 is only going to get better. Uh, by the way, shout out to anyone who has family in Ukraine. Uh, my heart goes out to you. I know it's not a tough time. Um, I'm from, I'm Russian. Uh, actually, my parents are Georgian. So former Soviet Union stuff. So my heart goes out to everybody in pain right now. Um, it's not easy. <clears throat> Potential World War Three. you know, it's, it's not easy. So, um, if you know anybody from Ukraine, um, if you know anybody just suffering in general, reach out to them, send them your love, okay? Um, Archie, what's up, Archie? Do you still use, <laughs> kind of a subject change really quick. Uh, do you still use the Thanos Pro 2 or just X or you went to better, bigger RE Trinity style system? I don't use rigs anymore like that, guys. I just used it to demo it for you to see if you needed it. Um, I don't use any crazy vest systems. Uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, I don't use vests anymore. I own three vests. I sold all of them because I just don't need them for what I do. Um, I don't shoot long events. So for me, it just wouldn't make sense. Um, but yeah, I just collaborated with those brands just to show you how to put that stuff together, how to use that stuff. Um, I think that's really important, uh, just as a filmmaker, just so you know what it's like, but good question, Archie. Thank you. Um, the Thanos pro two was, I don't think I used the pro two. I used the first gen. I don't know too much about the Thanos Pro 2, but I used the Thanos Pro and it was a decent system. I used one from them, I used one from Glide Gear, and I used one from Flycam. I don't even know if Flycam is around anymore. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm going to end the stream right here. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, let's aim for next Tuesday. For the next stream. I'm going to try and put it in the calendar. And commit to it. Uh, sometimes I don't know what's going to be happening. Uh, but I do want to commit to a minimum two live streams a week. Plus my standard uploads. Uh, I think that this channel is missing the human touch. And I do want to bring that into Momentum Productions. Because it is all about the energy. All about the momentum. And uh, I just want to be real with you guys. That's it. All right, guys. I'm out. Love you all. I'll talk to you soon. Stay safe out there. And uh, kick some ass.